There is so much more that you can do once you have the basics down. Once you learn to think in terms of differential elements and integrating them, once you have matrix algebra, linear algebra at your disposal, you can do so much. Let's do one more thing. Let's consider kinetic energy. Recall that a mass element, dm, has kinetic energy, dk, given as the following scalar. dk is one half length of v squared, d m. That's the, the vector version of 1 half mv squared. Okay, what happens when we have a rotating body? Well, if I write out dk as 1 half quantity v dot v times dm, then I can substitute in for, let's say, one of those velocities. I can substitute in omega cross r. And now I see a scalar triple product in there, v dot omega cross r. I remember that the scalar triple product is symmetric, so I can change the order and say that dk is one half omega dot r cross v dm, and voila, r cross v dm is really dl, the angular momentum element. Now, integrating both sides of this equation, I get that the kinetic energy k is really one half omega dot i omega, using the fact that l is i omega. And this is so cool. This is great. This is similar to the one half mv squared that we have from basic physics, but now we're using angular velocity, omega, that's a vector, and we're using the angular mass, i, the inertia matrix, as a quadratic form for computing this kinetic energy. I think that's really beautiful. I think it's so lovely how having learned a little bit of linear algebra, a little bit about the inertia matrix, we're now able to come up with such beautiful formulae. And if we summarize what we've been uh, learning in just the, the very basics here, we see how integral all of the matrix algebra is to it. We started with angular velocity as a vector, omega, satisfying v equals omega cross r. And from that basic definition, we were able to derive the angular momentum vector, L, as i times omega using the inertia matrix and matrix vector multiplication. That was really nice. We went on to show that torque is a vector, tau, that can be defined as dl dt, or then expressed as i times d omega dt, the angular mass times the angular acceleration. And lastly, we just went over the fact that kinetic energy for a rotating body is one half omega dot i omega. That's really just the beginning of the very long and beautiful subject of solid body mechanics, but you now have enough mathematics with you to be able to really dive into that subject and understand it at a very fundamental level. I hope that you go on to learn much more and that you find what you have learned here to be useful.